Hello, my name's Artemis, and is it me or does everyone in the fucking world have something or other to say about just about everything? Whether or not it actually affects them is completely immaterial. They will still inflict their opinion upon us as if they actually have a god-given right to be listened to. And honestly, for the most part, it's all bullshit anyways. But hell, I'm more than happy to be totally ironic and complain about other people voicing their opinions by voicing my opinions for the next 10 minutes or so. So yeah, fuck it, let's dig in. So obviously cancel culture is one of the very big parts of this fight for what apparently constitutes free speech. And whether it's on Twitter or in the printed press, there are scores of these assholes claiming to be silenced while simultaneously benefiting from this rather large platform they are privileged to have. It's very much become the fashion these days to brand such things that you don't agree with as woke or Marxist or lefty, or using phrases such as being silenced or cancel culture as if that's an automatic trump card that they're therefore invalidates anything that you disagree with. And when you combine this with a gross misunderstanding of what free speech actually means, it's quite easy to see how these people have got themselves all tied up in knots. You see, they do genuinely seem to believe that they have some God-given right to a Twitter account, to an audience and that anybody reacting to the bullshit that tumbles out of their mouth or onto their Twitter account is in fact silencing them. Not the just reactions of people reacting to bullshit that impacts their life and things they care about, no, it is silencing. And then in the most ironic and hypocritical part of all of that, they then seem to seek to silence those people who have points opposing theirs. Apparently, if you say, hey, I don't agree with that, and the fact that you're saying it to such a large amount of people was damaging, they will then try and dogpile you and say, well, no, you can't say that, that's silencing. No, you telling me I can't say it is silencing from your 100,000 followers Twitter page, but all right, whatever. Now, free speech is a very volatile volcano of a debate that's been raging on for years, and the constant battle between freedom of speech and freedom from consequence will always be fought on one plane or another. But there are other issues that have been dragged into the firing line that really don't deserve it, and typically they revolve around people controlling what other people can do with their life. That's right, despite overwhelming scientific evidence that gender is in fact a societal construct and that it is a much more diverse system than what is between your legs, Legs, these people have just boiled it down to what is between your legs, which is hilarious when you bring all sorts of different fucking arguments to them, but hell, they don't care about that, and they just instead decide to get involved and police exactly what is a man and a woman in what is essentially a massive failing in their education. <sighs> which is the most stupid fucking thing, because honestly... Their opinion doesn't fucking matter anyway. They're not part of this community. Like, you don't go to somebody who is not trans and say, what sort of medical treatment do you think you should have for gender reassignment? Well, they don't want it anyway. So why do their fucking voices matter? They don't is the secret to this fucking debate. They don't. And not only will they spend all this time arguing and debating what people should and shouldn't be able to do with their own lives, they then start inventing things to get upset about, dragging issues that don't really coincide, and getting preemptively upset about things that have not happened. And they wonder why people get pissed off with them and why we all think they're a little bit lost. I see so many middle-aged people on Twitter bitching about and clutching their pearls about people that they really will have no interaction with. They don't actually involve them in their life. They know nothing about the transgender community, but they still insist on influencing both political and medical issues that allow other people to live their life how they want. And honestly, it takes a very special brand of arrogance to believe that you actually fucking matter in a debate that you have no fucking fight in. Now, we could go on for hours and hours about each individual issue that people seem to be spewing their guts about on Twitter, and we wouldn't really get anywhere anyway, because ultimately, the issues themselves aren't really at the core of why people get so upset about it. There are deeper levels to this butthurtedness that they seem to be, you know, spewing out under the guise of, well, actually, it's this. Well, actually, no. I have some theories as to why exactly these fights and arguments get so vitriolic, and yes, we are about to go through those theories. 
For many, it just seems like they've got a desire to fight. Is that they've decided there is a group of people that they do not like, will not agree with, and nothing is going to change that. And anything that this group of people stands for, they will have to stand against, just out of fucking principle, I guess. And it doesn't matter what the science says. It doesn't matter what the general population says. And it doesn't matter how against their own views they're going to have to twist themselves they still need them to be wrong. They still need these other people to be wrong. It doesn't matter. They don't care about the issue at heart. That's just the lens of which they can view everything through. What's really going on is they don't like the fact that other people are saying, well, this is how things are now. They have to stand against that. It's not about being right. It's not about looking into an issue and finding out what the actual truth of the matter is. It's just about the other people being wrong. In many ways, it feels almost like a generational thing that, you know, people often use the excuse of, oh, well, they were raised in a different time. And I'm kind of like, yes, I'm sure that they were, but this is not that time anymore. And I'm sure that when you start to see the, you know, onwards march of progress and society moving forward and it's starting to leave all of your beliefs and sensibilities behind, it's very easy to just dig your heels in and be like, well, no, this was not how I've spent my life believing these things to be true. This is not what I was raised to see as factually correct, therefore everyone else must be wrong. It can't be me and my complete inability to move on with the times. No, it's got to be that everyone else is wrong. And I get it, you know, when you start to see the world move on, it must act as some sort of reminder of your mortality that, you know, in the grand race of life, you're nearing the finish line and other people are joining and taking the baton onwards to other places that you won't see. So I can kind of understand it. I think it's a little bit, you know, complete and utter bullshit. But I do believe that a lot of it is the whole changing of the guard. They feel their position in society is threatened because they are no longer the ones that set the rules and say what is and what is not. Other people are coming up and with scientifically backed studies and, you know, brick walls of logic that this bigotry just can't break through. And that hurts them. Ah yes, the phrase that people love to wheel out when they know an argument is just not going to be won by anyone and nobody's going to change their mind. Of course, let's just agree to disagree. Complete bullshit. I do not like this phrase. I do not hold to it either. Now, if you want to talk about the debate between, you know, football versus cricket, coffee versus tea, dogs versus cats, Agree to disagree is exactly where that should be. You know, like, okay, you're never going to change someone's mind, but it's okay, it's a, harm, it's a harmless little debate. It's just a little matter of opinion, it's all right. How other people get to live their life and the freedoms that should be afforded to them just based on the way that they were born, no, that's not an agree to disagree category at all. No, I don't agree to disagree at all. Not even a little bit. In fact, this entire mantra should be stamped out, okay? If you're going to control the way that someone else gets to express themselves, gets to live their life and who they are as a person, that is not agree to disagree. That's tyranny right there, okay? So this cannot work like this. And anybody who says when it comes to these debates, okay, let's just agree to disagree, they're not even following their own fucking phrase because they're not agreeing to disagree. They're doing it in a patronising way because they still believe that they're right and that you are just too blind to see it, too naive. And it's, oh, well, we'll just agree to disagree because secretly I know I'm right. When in reality, they've come up against a brick wall of logic that they know they cannot win against. And the last little theory that I want to speak on centres around the concept of an echo chamber, wherein somebody has an idea and they think that they are right, so they surround themselves with other people that also think it's right, and they only selectively look at the things that support their views. And if this is sounding just a little bit familiar, then basically that's what a lot of Twitter has become, is just a big group of various echo chambers. Now, we are all guilty of it, sure, yes, you know, I am obviously creating my own echo chamber with my page about how tea is better than anything else. And yes, I totally fully understand that. But the problem is that when it comes to these big issues like this, it's very easy to recycle these very clickbait, happy fucking points of view of, you know, well, these woke lefty Marxist bastards are all wrong. And yeah, well, I'll fucking retweet the shit out of that because I don't like immigrants, that sort of shit. And suddenly all these retweets start to spin around. They get a few numbers and then you retweet them again. And this echo chamber is just a bunch of people shouting in a very small room. 
And I do believe that that's where a lot of it comes from. People with very simple views on it. Just like, you know, they might have started off on the trans debate thinking, well, people just need to know what they're doing. You know, they need more counselling before they go on, you know, through such a rigorous medical process as this. Could very easily get extremized, I think that's a word, to the most bizarre and pointed viewpoints because it's a slow journey of just looking through all of this shit slowly building it up and suddenly oh my god we've got another anti-trans turf extremist among thousands sadly already and i do believe that that plays a very critical part of it i've known people in my life that you know were very easy going until they got on social media and got on twitter and then suddenly oh fucking hell what happened to you and it's sad, it really is sad. It's something that I don't think society has really been ready for, or really dealt with all that much. I mean, you didn't see this happening so much with newspapers before the internet was a thing, but there you go. The sad fact of the matter is that there will always be something that people like to kick off about. It's always something that someone wants to fight, and there will always be people who seek to control. It doesn't matter whether it's controlling legislation, medical freedoms, or even the rights of individuals and how people live their life. There will always be that battle for control. That's just the way it is. You can call it belief, opinion, you know, personal political views. You can call it whatever you want. You can dress it up however you like. At the very core of the issue, it's a simple matter of, I believe I'm right, even about things I know nothing about. And honestly, that's pretty fucking entitled, if you ask me. And obviously, any arguments to the contrary will just bring forth another vitriolic fight and spewing of hatred, because that's just how humans work. Once this set of arguments has fallen out of vogue, I'm sure a new set of issues and debates will take their place, and the same cycle will just repeat endlessly. And that's the real sad part of it, is that it will just recycle on and on. And we can talk about it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and it's, it's not going to make things any better but thank you for watching thank you for listening to our little vent this week because honestly people just need to shut the fuck up about things that they know nothing about and that don't actually impact them i mean they're not going to because social media is a cancer but hey here we are and i will exploit that cancer that social media to try and earn a living and <clears throat> if you wanted to maybe check out the merch and help support us in our beliefs, then that would be great. That would be wonderful. And I'm not going to patronize you or anything. I swear, I promise, I will talk to you with respect. If you buy a shirt, who knows, you might like it. Oh, right, let's see if the dog can beg for money. Oh, but yes, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy it. And, you know, if you didn't agree, then tell me that, you know, because I'm not trying to create an echo chamber here where everyone's like, yeah, what you said is right. If you disagree and whatnot, then put it in the comments or, you know, just shout it at me in the street, I guess. I don't care. Um, it's, it's fine, you know, it, people are allowed to have different opinions about a lot of things, but uh, when, when your opinion goes against scientific fact or goes, you know, against the rights of other people, then your opinion doesn't mean shit, and you are a piece of shit for thinking that it does. And there's no two ways about that, okay? At all. I will quite happily be a bigot about some of these things. Like, you know, people should be allowed to live their life on their terms. And if, you know, they want to express themselves, orient themselves in a certain way, then that is nobody else's fucking business. And if you think other than that, then you're more than welcome to get the fuck out of my life for good. Oh. And yes, if you would like to support uh, my efforts to, you know, be loud, shouty and ranty, maybe have a look at this. You know, maybe just have a little look and think, oh, I could join that. I could become a member. That would be quite nice. Help support this channel. Who knows? Maybe I'll get some benefits. Spoiler alert, you will. Oh, but yes, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it and it didn't just start a massive pissing contest in the comments section. And I guess I'll see you next week. Goodbye.